Does this now mean that Trinidad is at risk for a massive earthquake? In general terms, yes. According to studies done by the United States Geological Survey, the stresses that have built up along the central range fault zone can unleash massive earthquakes in excess of magnitude 7.0. Hey guys, what's up? What's up? What's going on in Trinidad and Tobago? Hope you had a great weekend. Listen, Trinidad and Tobago, you have to prepare for the big one. I'm talking about earthquake. This is something that you may have heard over the years. I'm just going to reinforce the point. And to reinforce that point, I'm going to let you know that between May the 1st this year to September the 14th, which was Saturday, Trinidad experienced about 26 earthquakes. Now, it's according to where you're living, you will feel these earthquakes because the epicenter will be located in a certain spot. And these earthquakes range from 3.6 magnitude to 4.2, putting out the big ones, which we felt, and I'll talk about that. But because they're so small in magnitude, you may not have felt some of them, especially if you're not living close enough to the epicenter of these earthquakes so let's go back a little bit to this a strong earthquake which strike northwest of trinidad and was felt across portions of the windward islands and this is taking you back a bit because this was sunday june the 23rd this year uh, where uh, trinidad and tobago um was rocked by a magnitude 6.2 earthquake at 11 59 pm on saturday but that was june the 22nd this year and so many of you remember that striking off uh, northwest of Port of Spain. But according to the University of the West Indies, and we're looking at that earthquake, uh, that earthquake occurred at a relatively shallow depth and was also located 99.6 kilometers east of Venezuela, a portion of Venezuela there. There were light to moderate shaking reported across Trinidad and Tobago lasting approximately 30 to 35 seconds. And that earthquake was also reportedly felt in St. Lucia, in St. Vincent, Grenada and dependencies, all right? Also, not in parts of Guyana as well and Venezuela. So why do I go back to this? This is just to let you know that you are to prepare for the big one. The reason being is that Trinidad sits on a fault line. And we'll talk about that fault line very soon. And when countries sit on fault lines, they're more susceptible to big earthquakes. So if you look on the screen, I'm showing you now a map and it's showing the Caribbean plate here. Uh, you've seen all of this, all of that. There's the Caribbean plate inside it. These are the fault lines running here, all the way around. And if you notice, it comes all the way through Trinidad, goes through uh, the tip of Venezuela there and into places like Caracas and others. But these are the fault lines. These are fault lines, massive fault lines. Map of Trinidad showing the study area and active fault system in the Caribbean South America plate boundary as proposed in the study. The Central Range Fault, the CRF, and the L Pillar Fault, which is the EPF, are the main strike slip transform faults. They take up the majority of the west, east, west dextral share related to the Caribbean and South American plate motion and are linked across the Gulf of Paria. So you see where your uh, fault line runs straight through. It's like it cuts the country in half. So that's what we are battling with. This other image on the screen shows these black dots you're seeing here, populated dots. These are where earthquakes have occurred between 1910 and 2002 in the Southeastern Caribbean. So Trinidad, you are in a dilemma when it comes to these fault lines. There is a massive fault line running through Trinidad. Let's get into this image so you can get a closer look at that. Look at Trinidad right here. It shows the Northern Range. It shows the El Pela fault extension. You see that breakable line right there going across. And it also shows the Central Range fault. That arrow pointing straight through here. And it goes all the way across at the central range fault, right? That's a fault line running through Trinidad. And there's the Las Pedros fault. So that's something that you have to take notice of. I'm not sure how many education there is on these things, but it is important for you to know these things once you're living in Trinidad. Like Turkey, Trinidad resides on the boundary between the Caribbean plate and the South American plate. 
This plate margin is currently active, where the Caribbean plate is currently moving eastwards past the South American plate at a rate of 22 mm per year. Similar to the East Antalyan Fault Zone, the southern boundary of the Caribbean South American plate interaction is a transform zone with elements of subduction and trust in presence. The Caribbean South American plate boundary actually bisects the island of Trinidad where the El Pilar Fault Zone and the Central Range Fault Zone are major components of this boundary. So these are major components of the Caribbean South American plate, all right? And it bisects Trinidad. So it's in the middle going through there, and I, show, I showed you that before. Does this now mean that Trinidad is at risk for a massive earthquake? In general terms, yes. According to studies done by the United States Geological Survey, the stresses that have built up along the Central Range Fault Zone can unleash massive earthquakes in excess of magnitude 7.0. So Trinidad and Tobago, you are actually to prepare for anything in excess of magnitude 7.0. All right. In fact, in recent times, we have experienced several large earthquakes with the most significant occurrence being a 6.9 shock on August 18, 2018. The quake had its epicenter in Venezuela, but had significant effects on TNT, such as damage to property and infrastructure and loss of essential utility services across the island. So that was a 6.9. The epicenter was in Venezuela, but it had significant effects on TNT. So we are in for not a good ride when it comes to these fault lines and not only in trinidad because there's a massive run running through jamaica as well haiti and those places i'm not sure if this is a continuous education in trinidad uh, but i think it was necessary for me to do this since i got some calls from persons in trinidad who have now subscribed to the channel and saw the information i placed out there with respect to jamaica so they were asking about Trinidad and the fault lines in Trinidad. We have to prepare for a big one. And the big one can actually sink Port of Spain. That's not from me. And I'll give you that information. It says Trinidad could sink if a major earthquake hits, says seismologists. And this was August 22, 2018. What I'm giving you here is not new information, but it's information that I think is need necessary to bring to the fore again. In Trinidad, seismologist Dr. Papadopoulos has said the city of Port of Spain is in grave danger of sinking below the ground in the event of a major earthquake. Now, I'm not telling anybody to run out of Port of Spain, but this is what the seismologist is saying. He said he was speaking during a Rotary Club of Central Port of Spain meeting that was in 2018, of course, and he warned that a major earthquake is due to hit the region in the coming years. He said, while an earthquake cannot be predicted, and that's the issue with earthquakes, it can't be predicted like hurricanes, the region should expect an earthquake with a magnitude of seven or more approximately every 27 years. And he said it has long been overdue, right? Papadopoulos, of course, is an engineering seismologist at the University of the West Indies. He said there has been vivid earthquake activity in the region in recent years, with an average 2,200 small earthquakes being recorded annually. He mentioned in that article in 2018 that the region should prepare for a big one. Trinidad, the port of Spain, is in grave danger of sinking. In, in the event of a major earthquake hit in Trinidad. He is correct based on the information I showed you before and where the fault lines exist and what kind of earthquake you can expect according to the USGS. They're talking about a 7.0, in excess of a 7.0, based on the stressors that have been placed on the fault lines uh, along Trinidad and Tobago or run beneath Trinidad and Tobago's foundation. So that is information that I think you need to know. And um, I am going to leave some links in the description below so you can check it out. But I just thought that I should come today and bring this information to you since it was requested by some of the subscribers. Now remember to share 
like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, because without you doing that, YouTube is not going to recommend the videos, neither with persons who need to know about this information will not get to see this information. You can share it on your social media platforms. You can share it around via WhatsApp as well to get the word out to people. It's just necessary information. There's no alarm, but it's necessary information for you to know. But I just want to remind you that between May of this year, the 1st of May, and September 14, which was Saturday, Trinidad and Tobago experienced 26 earthquakes ranging from 3.6 to 4.3 magnitude. Like I said, if you are not living in certain zones, you would not have felt it because the epicenter would have existed there because they're not large earthquakes per se. All right. So thanks for joining and do hope to catch you another time on this channel.